Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown from February 14th to February 25th, 2018. There's a 400 year nip in the air. Article talks about how the Little Ice Age began after the medieval warming period. Yeah, that heat spike that's warmer than today that they're trying to erase out of history. Met Office says global temperature is likely to exceed 1 to 1.5 one C just in the next five years. Don't know how that's possible since we've been at the pause for the last 20 plus. And even looking over the last 24 months doesn't show any indication whatsoever of warming. But they conveniently leave out that we're going into a grand solar minimum and our temperatures are going to cool. Extreme weather leads to patchwork harvest in Australia. Some areas down 70% on harvest from last year. Now exporters face high domestic prices soaring Australian dollar. The beginning of their difficulties for export. Also southern winters are drying out in Australia. University of Exeter shaking up the climate debate coming out saying that the IPCC extreme warming models putting 4.5 C or above are actually fictitious that the most you could expect would be right around 3.4 C that was government funded as well early season typhoons rolling over the Philippines into southern Vietnam and happy Chinese New Year of the dog 2018 Spotted this article in Breitbart, 485 scientific papers published that undermine consensus in climate change. That piqued my interest. Following over to the no trick zone, crumbling consensus is an understatement. This entire series of papers ignored by the mainstream media casts doubt on the position of anthropogenic global warming as a function of the climate's thermostat control knob, period. They've broken these down into natural mechanisms, including all of the oceans, the failed climate modeling, and the natural changes in climate variability and observations. You know, we hear so much about, oh, the evaporating oceans are causing all this new cloud formation because of heating oceans. Well, the heat sure isn't north of Iceland in the seas. It's sure not in the western tropical Indian Ocean. It's definitely not in the central Labrador Sea. It's not in the Mediterranean, it's not in the North Atlantic Ocean, it's not in the Southwest Pacific. It can only be galactic cosmic rays brought on by the grand solar minimum. 400 year cycle just with the grand solar minimum. Cinnabung awoke a few years ago on a 400 year cycle. Massive eruption pushing ash 15 kilometers, some say 17 kilometers, visible from satellites ash covering crops locally this is going to spread into southeast asia dust veil index back to 1600 reads like a today's active volcano list looking at the most powerful eruptions of all time the ones that send us into global crop failures papua new guinea indonesia just like we're seeing today and then iceland awakening going back in time grand solar minimum fingerprint is a massive eruption that produces famine globally 44 BC, Vesuvius 79, late antique little ice age, 600s, UN dynasty collapsing, 1280, spore minimum eruptions, Vanuatu, year without a summer, Dalton minimum, and it's all about the solar radiation declines as the ash enters our atmosphere. Looking what can happen in the last 70 years, the forcing, and what's the delay going to be on cooling regionally and crop losses across Southeast Asia with this eruption, this new grand solar minimum, our Earth needs to equalize its charge with the sun as it decreases its activity state, which means more tectonic activity, more violent volcanic eruptions is my personal opinion. I believe this is it. The Earth is speaking to us. This volcanic eruption is the beginning of the cycle of a year without a summer. Our globe is not ready for even a 20% reduction in food output. The long anticipated super freeze over Europe that's going to destroy crops, buds, and anything growing in the fields that's already come out because of the warmer than average January and February. Taking a look at the temperature anomalies, a view from the North Pole looking down. What it's going to look like across Europe, 
UK going to reach into the minus 15 Celsius with snow. Look at Croatia. Finland already minus 18. Snow waves in Slovenia. And here's how they hang the laundry in Iceland after the blizzards.